So this next part of the lesson, we're going to focus in on the 802.11 physical layer standards. Now, it was actually quite some years ago here in the United States that the FCC released Spectrum for unlicensed use. And again, different countries around the world were doing the same thing around about the same time as well. Now, the very first 802.11 standard, it was finalized in 1997. And in there, there was two spread spectrum radios. One was a frequency hopping technique, and then there was a direct sequence spread spectrum technology. And that formed the basis of which 802.11b developed on. And so in the 90s, there was a lot of different wireless LAN technologies. And it's really 802.11 that became the de facto standard. And in particular, it was the evolution of the direct sequence spread spectrum one, i.e. 802.11b. Now, because 802.11b evolved from the initial direct sequence spread spectrum, it uses the same channel structure as that initial standard. And then you can say, OK, this also applies when I'm looking at 802.11b. So again, this standard was defined for operations in the 2.4 gigahertz band only. It defined specifically the frequency band. In the 2.4 gigahertz band, here in the US, I have about 79 megahertz of spectrum. And 802.11 direct sequence spread spectrum defined a 22 megahertz channel. So if I have 79 megahertz of spectrum, that allows me to deploy three non-overlapping channels, i.e. channel 1, channel 6, and channel 11. And that's simply because the way the spectrum band is defined is to define a channel every 5 megahertz. So channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, etc. are all 5 megahertz apart, but there are only three non-overlapping channels. If you deploy your wireless LAN on channel 1 and channel 2, they are overlapping. And what that means is that they will interfere with each other. So in an enterprise setting, you would choose to deploy your Wi-Fi network. If you're using the 2.4 gigahertz band, you would deploy on channels 1, 6, and 11. And many of you may have seen that in the corporate environment. Now, if you go to Europe, they actually have more spectrum available and different regulatory rules. And so Europe actually allows 13 channels. And so it's very common in Europe that when you deploy your Wi-Fi network, you can use channel 1, 7, and 13. And 1, 7, and 13 are also non-overlapping. And because they're a little bit further apart, it avoids a little bit more adjacent channel interference. Now, although here we're focused on the US or North America, Europe, and Japan, there's also a grouping in the specifications called rest of the world. And so most countries will conform to one of these plans. Either they'll be the same as the US, they'll be the same as in Europe, or else they'll conform to the rest of the world. As I mentioned, 802.11b was an enhancement to the direct sequence spread spectrum standard that was defined in 1997. And 802.11b is called the higher rate direct sequence spread spectrum. And it was just defined a couple of years later. And this is the technology that took off, absolutely took off like crazy. And a lot of people say to me, hey, Avril, what happened to A? Why didn't A come out first? Well, 802.11a was also 
defined in 1999, but 802.11a used an OFDM radio, and I've mentioned before OFDM radio is far more complex, and so you see 802.11b products coming to the market before A products, but A and B from a status perspective were defined at the same time. Now one of the differences between 802.11a and b is that b was defined to operate in the 2.4 gigahertz band whereas a is in the 5 gigahertz band and 802.11b will allow you to get up to speeds of 11 megabits per second and it's talking about the data rate that I'm transmitting at. It's not talking about my throughput. So I mentioned A was standardized at the same time as 802.11b and I mentioned that it uses an OFDM radio. An OFDM radio used to be about 15 to 20 percent more expensive than a direct sequence spread spectrum but really over the years those prices have almost become negligible now because there's just so much OFDM product out there the prices have fallen back. But you'll notice here that the 802.11a standard is deployed in the 5 gigahertz band. Now the good thing about an OFDM radio is it gets up to higher data rates in the same frequency channel. So the same amount of spectrum is required as 802.11b, but in 802.11a I can get up to 54 megabits per second and 802.11b only 11 megabits per second. And again, these are my maximum data rate speeds in good RF conditions. On the edge of the cell, my data rate will drop. Now this is super important to understand. 802.11a operates in the 5 gigahertz band and there's a lot more spectrum available in the 5 gigahertz band. So you saw in the 2.4 gigahertz band I told you that here in North America I just have 79 megahertz of spectrum, a little bit more in Europe. But here in the 5 gigahertz band, here in North America, there is actually 555 megahertz of spectrum. The spectrum in North America is called the Uni 1, the Uni 2, the Uni 2 Extended, and the Uni 3 bands. The Uni 1 band is for indoor use and has a lower power level than the other bands. The Uni 3 band is for outdoor use and has a higher transmit power that's allowed. So different regulations, different bands. But combined I've got 455 megahertz of spectrum. So before we were talking about three non-overlapping channels, up in the 5 gigahertz band I've got lots of non-overlapping channels. This picture here illustrates just the Uni 1 and the Uni 2 bands and just in those two bands I have eight non-overlapping channels. Here in the 5 gigahertz band you'll see a deployment on channel 36, 40, 44, 48 etc. And so you're talking about deployment theta to 11a which uses a 20 megahertz channel and so again the frequency channels are defined 5 megahertz apart and so my channels are 20 megahertz so my use channel is jumping by 4 i.e. 4 times 5 megahertz equals 20 megahertz so my first 20 megahertz channel is centered on channel 36 which you can see from the slide is 5.18 gigahertz channel 40 is the next 20 megahertz channel centered on 5.2 gigahertz now 802.11a did not take off well in the market and the reason is is it doesn't go as far and so my coverage isn't as good as deploying in the 2.4 gigahertz band. However, what you should know is that now people are looking at this band for deployment of 802.11n and we'll talk about why in a little bit. Now, back in 2003, what they did is they said, well, you know what, why don't I take 
this 802.11a standard, which is defined for operations in the 5 GHz band, and deploy it in the 2.4 GHz band. And that's what G is. It's literally A in a different frequency band. Now, it operates the same way. It uses a 20 MHz channel. It's an OFDM radio. So it is exactly the same as A, just tuning into a different frequency. The other major difference is because B is deployed in the 2.4 GHz band, if I deploy an OFDM radio in the 2.4 GHz band, I have to worry about backward compatibility with my direct sequence spread spectrum 802.11b. And so there were some extra steps put in to enable compatibility to allow one access point to support B devices and G devices and allow them both to be able to take turns in communicating. So following 802.11g, the next physical layer standard that was defined was 802.11n, and it was finished in 2009. Now, a lot of people had product out before 2009, and you'll see the Wi-Fi Alliance certification stamp on those products, and if you look at it, it says draft. 802.11n, or just draft n, i.e. they took an earlier release of the specification before it finalized, and the Wi-Fi Alliance created interoperability tests so vendors could get their product out while they're waiting for the standards to finalize, because the standards took forever. Now, 802.11n also uses an OFDM radio, but it now introduces MIMO, multiple input, multiple output antennas. And this is one of the techniques, if not the key technique, that gets me up to higher data rates. So multiple antennas means that I'm transmitting on multiple antennas and receiving on multiple antennas. And so you can imagine if I have two antennas and one antenna is transmitting bit 1 and one antenna is transmitting bit 2, I'm sending two bits at the same time, then I've doubled my data rate. One of the other things here on the third bullet about 802.11n is that n operates in both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band, whereas a, b, defined Pacific operations in a Pacific band, N is band independent, and 802.11N promises data rates up to 600 megabits per second.